it's 200 ballistic missiles coming in at Israel that, that are, is, the, is the worst case. And, and this strike, um, again, Israel was very successful, but it has to worry uh, that, that Iran will think it can get away with launching um, a much more serious strike involving mostly ballistic missiles. And Iran's ballistic missiles are remarkably accurate. I mean, there's a joke that I used to hear in Israel that, that if a civilian target is hit in, in, in Israel by an Iranian ballistic missile, it would be deliberate. It wouldn't be inadvertent. And so the, that's really what's in the back of the minds of many of the Israeli military planners is that, yes, this worked. And it worked remarkably well, better than expected. There was some advance notice that helped so that airplanes could be launched and be prepared to shoot down the drones uh, before they hit the Israeli border. But, but Iran crossed a threshold that's never been crossed before. Now, the US Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says Washington expects to impose new sanctions on Iran in the coming days following its attack on Israel. Israel's calling for sanctions to be imposed on Iran's missile project. Tel Aviv's foreign minister says he's written to 32 countries calling for restrictions. A wave of missiles and drones were fired from Iran, Iraq, Syria and Yemen on Saturday, with most being downed by Israel and its allies. Israel is still considering a military response. Well, David Albright is a former weapons inspector in Iraq for the United Nations. He's author of Peddling Peril, How the Secret Nuclear Trade Arms America's Enemies and is also founder of the Institute for Science and International Security. Good evening to you, David. Good evening. Good evening to you, too. Um, let me just ask, uh, first of all, about um, what you think is going on uh, in Israel. We know there's a big discussion about how they're going to respond, um, perhaps militarily, to this Iranian attack on Israeli soil. But there's also talk of sanctions. Well, I, th I think Israel certainly doesn't feel like they won something. I think they feel more like they got um, that their systems worked and got a little lucky, too. I mean, it is pretty remarkable that 99% of the projectiles were, were shot down. Some, some that included ballistic missiles. Uh, it probably wouldn't happen again. And so I, I think they are very worried. Now, they're not going to say, oh, we won or we succeeded. And then, OK, end of story. I mean, this is an ongoing struggle with Iran. And they're, first of all, going to try to make Iran nervous. They're going to want to make Iran start to get anxious about a, a strike that's coming. Now, if that strike will come, we'll just have to see. Um, but I think that they feel in Israel very strongly that they're not deterring Iran enough. And Iran has changed the dynamic dramatically of the conflict between Iran and Israel. And they need to think of how to get the deterrence back up so Iran doesn't think to do this again. Yeah, I mean, we've had um, the British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak um, calling Benjamin Netanyahu today, um, saying that calm heads must prevail. We had um, those calls from President Biden um, calling for restraint, as you suggested there, um, saying that this was a win for Israel because 99% um, of those missiles um, were intercepted. But do you think that Benjamin Netanyahu, and of course, very importantly, his war cabinet, is in any mood to listen to those calls for restraint? I, I think they, they're listening. I mean, it, Israel's in also in a new dynamic where it doesn't just have to satisfy its very closest allies like the United States and Britain. It now has to balance uh, its actions against how Saudi Arabia would react, um, UAE, Jordan. So I think it, it's, it's thinking through these things in a much more complicated way and, and so I, I would imagine its response, whatever it's going to be, is, is going to be done more slowly. But I, I do think that prime, your prime minister and my president shouldn't be making these kinds of comments. I mean, of course, we don't want an escalation, but I think they're inadvertently leading to a situation that is encouraging Iran and its allies that it can get away with this, that 
the effort to avoid conflict is so great that it encourages con conflict initiated by our adversaries. And so I wish they would just back away from these statements. Um, so you think that those messages good. from um, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and from President Biden are actually sending out the wrong signal to Iran, saying, oh, look, we're going to be very cautious how we respond to this. Um, th th that is, in a way, encouraging Iran in its aggression. Yeah, I think so. And it's a mistake. And, and people in Israel certainly know that Iran can do much more. I mean, in, in discussions I've had over, you know, if, if you do strike the nuclear sites, what are you going to have to worry about? I mean, it's it's 200 ballistic missiles coming in at Israel that that are is the is the worst case, and and this strike um, again, Israel was very successful, but it has to worry. Uh, that that Iran will think it can get away with launching uh, a much more serious strike involving mostly ballistic missiles. And Iran's ballistic missiles are remarkably accurate. I mean, there's a joke that I used to hear in Israel that that if a civilian target is hit in, in, in Israel by an Iranian ballistic missile, it would be deliberate. It wouldn't be inadvertent. And so... The, that's really what's in the back of the minds of many of the Israeli military planners is that, yes, this worked. And it worked remarkably well, better than expected. There was some advance notice that helped so that airplanes could be launched and be prepared to shoot down the drones uh, before they hit the Israeli border. But, but Iran crossed a threshold that's never been crossed before by Iran. And it's a very new situation. And we shouldn't be telling Israel, OK, just accept it. You won. Because they didn't. They things of the deck has been shuffled. And and Israel's not going to have to think through them. what that means in terms of its its survival, ultimately. And that's finally what I find um, also troubling about comments by Western leaders is it's not their survival at stake here. And, and, and you can kill the state of Israel in many ways, directly or indirectly through people just not wanting to live there anymore. And so, so I think it's a, it's a, it's a very complicated um, situation and, and it's new. And as I said, the deck's been shuffled and Israel has to sort its way through this. And what about that, the scale of the threat from Iran? Of course, we know that it has um, been um, instrument instrumental or behind some of those groups in um, both in Lebanon with Hezbollah, with the Houthis, in Yemen, um, with other groups in Syria and so on. Um, and Iran itself... Uh, we know that for many years it's had these nuclear ambitions. Of course, well, we had the Iran deal. Um, that was being monitored quite closely. But since the collapse of that deal, when President Trump pulled out, I mean, it, do we have any way of knowing the extent of Iran's nuclear program? Uh, the International Atomic Energy Agency ha has provided a, a great deal of information and also Israeli intelligence. I mean, we know tremendous number of details about their past nuclear weapons effort and efforts that continued after that because of the of the actions of the Israeli military intelligence agency. And so we have a very good handle. And I think there is a view, at least I shared, Iran has not decided to build nuclear weapons, but it's been taking many steps so that it could be prepared to build nuclear weapons rather quickly if the order comes from up on high. And, and so I think there is some comfort in that. But it also, the, given the changes in the region, we don't know if, if Iran is, is entering a stage where it's going to be actively discussing whether to build nuclear weapons. And again, it'll be secret discussions and it'll involve the top leadership. And that, but that Iran has its own thoughts and dynamics to, to consider. In, in this, and, and one of which is, are they safer in their minds with nuclear weapons or without them? And we're now hearing talk from the US Treasury Secretary and from Israel itself about further sanctions on Iran. But I mean, Iran is already under a, a huge amount of sanctions. They don't seem to be affecting its behavior very much. No, and that's true. And I think the um, they're not very well enforced. I mean, the Iran's oil exports are quite large when they 
shouldn't be uh, based on the sanctions already applied. So um, they get large sums of money you know, for releasing hostages or um, for money owed, let's say, via or in by Iraq. Um, they don't need to, we don't have to give them that money. We control it and we don't have to give them that money and we can enforce the oil sanctions. So, I mean, there's quite a bit that can be done to drive down the Iranian economy. Um, also, I would imagine most, there are you, lots of the electronic components in the, sh in the drones and missiles launched in Israel um, have U.S. electronic components in them. I mean, we find in the in the Shahid-136 that Russia regularly launches at Ukraine, you know, it was 80% of the of the electronic components were were made by U.S. manufacturers, and and that's an Iranian drone. Um, and so I would imagine the same thing holds in the Shahid 136s that were launched at Israel. That it's U.S. manufacturers are holding up the entire missile and drone program uh, of Iran, and and the, there's methods to try to disrupt the supply chain. Uh, certainly our U.S. manufacturers are not selling those items directly to Iran, but they're getting there through through distributors and, and, and uh, trading companies. But we know how to disrupt yeah. those kind of activities. Yeah. And, and, doing... and clearly um, sanctions um, could be imposed to make it uh, more difficult for Iran to obtain those components. Um, David, it's been great to speak to you. Um, David Albright, Bright, former UN uh, weapons inspector in Iraq. Um, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Yeah, thank you. Take care.